The Traveler and I made one each. Here, have a taste while it's still warm. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> huh? What is it? What does that face mean? I... This flavor... I've tasted it before. Uh, apologies. Xiongling, Traveler, thank you both. This is everything I had hoped it would be. It tastes wonderful, and... Quite amazingly, somehow it took me right back to my childhood. When my grandfather was still around. Really? That's awesome! I didn't have a chance to fully explain before. In fact, when Master had filled in the missing parts of the recipe for me, I realized that I already knew how to make this dish. You already knew? You mean you were able to make this without ever seeing the recipe? Uh-huh. My dad taught me how to make it. Wait, but isn't this dish from Kuching's grandpa's notes, though? About that. I do not believe that this recipe was my grandfather's creation. My grandfather was a well-known real estate tycoon in Liyue, and also a scholar. He was an avid collector of old books and was quite knowledgeable on many of Liyue's customs and traditions that are no longer practiced. As a child, I used to spend a lot of time with him in his study. We'd read the classics together, then debate how much of it was actually genuine, and whether Rex Lapis was real or not. He used to say, books are just a bridge that bring us a little closer to history. It's up to those of us in later generations to ask these questions, search for the answers, and decide what they mean. Since then, my grandfather has passed on, and I've grown up to become a Qixing. My views on Rex Lapis have changed in this time too, from myth to reality. For me, the name Rex Lapis is inextricably wound up with memories of my grandfather. Whenever I see his name written down, it always reminds me of sitting in my grandfather's study, seeing all of his notes. As I said earlier, this recipe came from those same notes. It's an ancient dish that he was trying to restore to its original form. But, unfortunately, without the full recipe, he never quite succeeded. Still, each time he tried cooking it, he'd always get me to have a taste while it was still warm. <sighs> the memories. This really is the taste of my childhood. Ancient dish? Are cornbread buns really that old? Well, at least in my family it is. My dad learned how to make it from his dad, and supposedly it's been passed down that way for generations. We call them chili minced cornbread buns. They're a traditional folk food snack, easy to pack up and take with you on the road. So they're the perfect thing to eat on the go. La, la, la. <laughs> Seeing Guoba just reminded me of something. I actually made this dish on the day I first met Guoba. How did you first meet? It was in a cave in the mountains. I ducked inside to get out of the rain and saw an offering table in there. So I put the cornbread buns I brought with me on it. Then I ended up falling asleep, and when I woke up, I found out that Guoba had eaten every last one! Guoba followed me around ever since. We're practically family now. Hold up! Stop the conversation! Look! The... the stone! It burst open! It's... it's... Guoba? What are you... what? Mara? Ah, I see the chili mince cornbread buns have been served. Master! Granny, look! The, the stone god statue looks just like Guoba! Oh, indeed it does. After all, Guoba is the deity you've been searching for. God of the stove. Guoba... Guoba is a god? Ah, uh, nah. You asked me if a sufficiently festive atmosphere would be enough to reawaken the stove god. And my answer is this. Yes. And no. The stove god has always been a deity with great affection for the people, and who acts in response to their desires. To him, 
The heart's passions and the heart's desires are not the same thing. Passion can be a technique, a skill, something derived from experience. But desires, they are deeper, more innate. They are the heart's strength in its purest form. Masterful chefs is wonderfully exciting, but it is more an exercise of passion than of desire, and passion alone will not suffice to reawaken the stove god from his deep slumber. But just now, when Kuching ate this dish he had longed for, a deeply held desire was fulfilled. As well as receiving an answer to her question, she also gained something much more precious. A moment of poignant nostalgia so vivid, it felt like she was right there alongside her grandfather. The enormous power unleashed by the fulfillment of this desire resonated with the stove god's statue, and caused it to manifest once more the form it took in the past. Of course, the stove god himself is not contained within the statue. <laughs> the true stove god has been here with us all along. Uh... How does it feel, seeing a statue of yourself from your glory days? Ah, look at him. Still so majestic. Glory days? Wait, what happened? Did Groba used to be different from now? Oh, yes. Back in his day, your Guoba was once the patron god of the soil. But all the wisdom and power he had then, he has since surrendered to the soil itself. A god surrendering their power to the soil. I have heard this turn of phrase before, but what does it mean? The kinds of trials and tribulations that a land can face are far more than you could imagine. Droughts, floods, torrential rain, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and plagues. The threat of disaster will never fully disappear from Liyue. Even woes that have never been faced before in history will come to pass in the future. Such things affect you mortals far more than we Adepti, with our immortal forms. He once walked with you over the barren plains until you arrived at last at the harbor. He joined you in building your dwellings and lighting the stoves. It was his hand that lit the very first street lamp of Liyue and brought the aroma of cooked food into every household in the land. You mortals no longer remember him, but back in the age when you did, he was the closest of all the Adepti to the common folk. Machosius, god of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well-being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp, fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster and plague arose once more. The stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended and his wits greatly reduced, thus his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human.
He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame, then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. The stove god departed, and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves, and cooked food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Nature provides, the mountains rejoice, we are blessed by heaven's good grace. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive. You once told me that dining is the profoundest of customs in the human world. To eat well is to consume vitality itself. And to drink well is to partake of the very essence of the world. It is a matter of paramount importance, you said, for people cannot face the arduous journey ahead on an empty stomach. At once a humble affair and a profound one. A humble meal of maize and spring water is also profound in that. By ensuring one's survival, it paves the way for millennia of human history and culture to come. My dear friend, Liu has changed so much while you have slept. Looking at the prosperity and beauty around us today, does it make you happy? Woba, this is kind of a huge deal. Why didn't you say anything? Uh, he... He is not who he once was. Even the power of speech evades him now. There is no way he could have told you. Oh. Well, well, but... But... Mm. Xiangling. Do not be saddened, Xiangling. There are two sides to everything. Guo Ba may have lost many of his formal faculties, but... He is now as carefree as can be, without a single worry in the whole world. In this world we inhabit, who can truly be said to live a life free of all woes? Those with a mind and with the knowledge will certainly be troubled by all manner of things. But he has gone further than us in his journey. He had both wisdom and courage. Everything he took upon himself, he was also ready to part with. His carefree demeanor today is a testament to the fact that he is at rest. So since you are his friend, take good care of him. Go out to walk and play. Allow him to eat, drink, and be merry. I will! You can count on me! Xiangling... You have an adeptal affinity. Guoba follows you around because he has respect for you. The moment he awoke, he was met with a familiar flavor in the chili mince cornbread buns he ate. After all that time, he still recognized the dish he had invented. And he approved of you as the one who had cooked it. That's right. The taste of one's home cuisine always brings back memories of home. Though he remembered nothing, eating the food you had cooked gave him a feeling of familiarity. That is why he stuck by you. 
You may be the first person in history to give the Stove God the experience of being a satisfied customer. That makes you quite a remarkable chef. If that's true, I couldn't be happier. Because putting a smile on customers' faces is what we chefs are called to do. Well then, it's getting late and I still have things to do. Time for me to say goodbye. Traveler, Paimon, Xiangling, thank you all very much. I look forward to spending more time together in the future. I guess my dad's probably heard the good news already, but I should still go catch up with him. Master, it's been a while since you came by. Why don't you join me? He thinks about you all the time, you know. He's always telling me to invite you over. Oh, goodness me. Then, far be it from me to refuse. Off we go, then. Let's saunter over gently and see how all the city folk are getting along. <laughs>